Let's go back to Doc Day and our amazing lineup for today. Our next speaker is Jean, Jean Langford. And Jean is, again, one of our DDoc voices who was just joining us at EASD in Stockholm. Jean, are you there? I am. Hello, everyone. How are you all? It's all lovely Hello. to see you. <laughs> you were going to talk a little bit about your personal story and how you got into advocacy and also how you what you were doing at EASD last week. So take it away. It's always lovely to hear from a DDoc voice herself like you. So incite, uh, ignite the fire in others. Oh, thank you so much, Bastian. And thank you to the DDoc team for having me to present today. I really appreciate it. And I'm so privileged to be here. Um, so I am just sharing my slides there. Perfect. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Jean Lankford and I'm a DDoc voice. I'm very proudly using my DDoc. Um, image there uh, from EASD last week, which was an incredible experience. Um, so just to introduce myself, I'm from Limerick in Ireland. Um, I'm currently undertaking a master's in dietetics. I'm a diabetes advocate in the last three years, having lived with type 1 diabetes for 16 years. Um, I'm a member of Midwest Diabetes, which I'll talk about in this presentation. I work for the International Diabetes Federation of Europe, and I am, again, a DDoc voice very, very proudly. Um, so I just wanted to talk about how I got to where I am today and how I got into advocacy. So um, in January 2020, well in December 2019, I wasn't doing so great and I'm so glad that Johanna and Kuvan spoke earlier to mental health with diabetes and the impact it has on people living with diabetes. Um, I wasn't doing so great and I'd spoken to my sister about it and when we talk to people who don't have diabetes about having diabetes, it can be challenging for them because they can't take it away. But what my sister did do is she invited me to talk on her podcast about how I experienced diabetes and the way it impacts my life to try and raise awareness about living with diabetes. So I, I went for it um, I decided to go for it and I thankfully enjoyed it and never looked back. And uh, you can see my friend Andrea there next to me speaking with me on the podcast about living with diabetes. Andrea Havernet is training as a clinical psychologist to work with people with diabetes. So we spoke on the Limerick Lady podcast and that was it for a bit. I got to speak about diabetes and I thought it was a great opportunity to raise awareness and I really enjoyed it. And the podcast was published and um, a peer support group reached out to me, a member of a peer support group and uh, that I wasn't aware of. And um, then I decided I'd start talking about diabetes. So I started blogging in December 2020 on Instagram thinking I was one of the very few diabetes bloggers in the world, completely unaware of the diabetes online community. How my eyes have been opened since, thankfully. Um, so I started blogging about uh, living with diabetes. I blogged for 90 days in a row and uh, started talking to more and more people living with diabetes in Ireland and internationally. And a can of worms was opened and the next level of life was just unlocked for me. And I wasn't alone with this anymore and I wasn't struggling with it. And well, I was the struggle never fully ends, but I was not alone with the struggle, which had a huge impact on my life and my quality of life, knowing that I wasn't alone living with diabetes. So over the last few years, a lot of things have happened. Um, so I am still posting to Instagram. I've gotten to travel so much with diabetes and I used to look at diabetes as a barrier to traveling. Um, I've gotten access to different technologies through advocating for myself. In the city I'm from in uh, Ireland, in Limerick, we, we had a lot of issues with accessing technology and care and structured education. And I'll speak to that in a minute. So um, this is what has accumulated over the last few years. And that's why this is the butterfly effect of advocacy because it's been chaos, but wonderful chaos. And I have found my drive and I am loving them hard as <laughs> Renza always encourages us to do. So um, I want to speak to the group um, that I'm in for advocacy. Uh, we are called Midwest Diabetes. And that time when I had recorded the podcast, it was the lovely Ashley White who reached out about um, the peer support group in the city I was in. And a few of us were very like-minded and all had the same vision and goals for um, what people in Ireland should have access to in terms of diabetes technology, education and care. In particular in the Midwest, uh, we had not been doing so great. So we came together and uh, we formed our wonderful advocacy group, Midwest Diabetes. And this is the lovely uh, team members here. Um, this is some of the uh, bits that we've done. So we meet with politicians, we, um, we write to politicians, we uh, had a campaign outside the hospital to talk about the different um, issues of access to care and education and 
um, what we needed in the hospital. And we welcomed politicians to come and uh, speak with us about it. And it was absolutely fantastic. We had more than 30 people outside of the University Hospital Limerick um, talking about what needs to change. And this was all on World Diabetes Day last year. And uh, this is all of us there standing outside with uh, fellow people living with diabetes in the Midwest region and the politicians who came to support us. So what was going on? So um, the waiting list is currently seven years for people to get their first appointment with the, U the University Hospital Limerick group um, on diagnosis. And that waiting list is 573 people currently. At the time, there was only 0.5 of a consultant endocrinologist in that hospital, which was serving three different cities. Um, and that's between three hospitals. We now have two uh, whole time endocrinologists. Uh, at the time, we only had 4.4 uh, in terms of the positions of diabetes specialist nurses. We now have six diabetes specialist nurses, thanks to the campaigning and advocacy and support of our local politicians. We had no dietitians in our diabetes clinic for adults. We now have three and we had no diabetes specialist, diabetes specialist education. And uh, we are now Daphne approved as of this year. We were the only level four hospital um, our, in our level four hospital group in Ireland to not have Daphne. And we now have that approved. So we have structured education coming in for people living with type one diabetes. Um, there's been challenges to accessing technology, which I experienced personally. I wasn't attending for my care um, in Limerick as I wasn't able to access an insulin pump or technology. So we are still working on this as well. So as a group, we've come together to try and improve these services so that people in the Midwest region can um, have access to the proper tools, technologies and education that they deserve to have. And having not been able to access um, these things for so many years for myself and being alone with my diabetes, I'm really passionate about this. And I'm so glad that I found my tribe um, both locally and now internationally to advocate for better access to care and services so that people with diabetes really can live a full life. <laughs> so um, I always hear this uh, quote thrown around that we can do anything with diabetes. But for me, I truly believe that we can do anything with diabetes, with diabetes education, mental and medical support, the right treatment for each individual, whether that's pumps or pens. And by acknowledging that there is a possibility that there will be times where achieving a goal might require support or going a slower or longer route that works for the person with diabetes. And my message from my journey is I really want others to use their voice to advocate for not just what they need, but what they want. Um, diabetes is hard enough. We all need access to the things that we want and need and the support that we want and need. And advocacy truly does drive policy and I've seen it firsthand with our wonderful advocacy group and I'm so excited for us to be able to um, achieve all of our goals within the Midwest region and then hopefully contribute towards bigger and better projects to make the lives for people with diabetes better across the board. Um, thank you so much again to DDoc Voices for having me speak today. It's an absolute privilege and I've really enjoyed the speakers so far. So thank you very, very much to you all. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Wonderful presentation. And you will have seen the couple of comments that are looped in. Here's another one from one year DDoc Voice from Pakistan, who you met at EASD Stockholm just last week. So I think your, your term butterfly effect is just making the rounds. We saw Leon commenting from Australia. So it's uh, going around the world already with Doc Day broadcasting live. I love it. There is another comment here, and I'm going to loop it in and say hi to Steffi, our head of comms, who was, as I said, supposed to host this day today. So, yes, Steffi is watching Home Alone with COVID, but here's a comment that it starts advocating for ourselves, and then we learn that advocating together can be so powerful. And you just said thank you for bringing you to the DDoc Voices, it is us to have to thank you because this is really what makes us so proud when someone joins the DDoc Voices and then we can see that this network, this community coming together helps others to do great things like you have been doing, you know, with, with your last three words, advocacy drives policy. It is so important to understand that, that it is much more than just, you know, trying to get better treatment or better devices for yourselves. Coming together in this group, using tools, that we can shape together to then change the realities on the ground is so important and feels so powerful and worthy. So thank you for becoming part of this group, Jean, and thank you for sharing your, your personal journey. There's a lot more, a lot more comments here. I'm getting a bit overwhelmed. I won't be able to share them. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. And it was great to meet you finally in person after so many years of lockdown uh, in Stockholm. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, you and the team. This is just an absolute privilege. And I feel so blessed to be able to hear everyone else speak today as well. It's just been, yeah, everyone is incredible here. It's a, it's a great room to be in, great company to be in. <laughs>